It's four o'clock on a Monday. Oops. <laughs> Ooh, beef jerky came up. It's four o'clock on a Monday. Do you know what that means? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. This week, starring special guest star Mr. Chuck Henry. There you go. Fake fan, thank you, fake audience. Oh, God. And this cracks me up. Sorry about the beef jerk. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Good to see you guys in the chat room. I see more Kimley. I see Patty Boss. It's going too fast. Kenda Potter, we will write you a song. Fentamalonis, Chaptress, Charles Wilson. Ken DePotter, if I didn't say that already, uh, James Haggerty, realtor. <laughs> Peter Rahill, spoke to Rahill on the phone this morning. That was great. Uh, Dan Weber, Darren Fletcher, Keith LeBrant is in the house. You know what? Keith LeBrant invented Composer Catalog. We're going to be giving that away a little later in the show. So whoever wins it when you're using it and loving it, Keith LeBrant is the reason for that. So before I forget, the top of the show, um, well, hi, Chuck. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, Bria hasn't kicked me under the table yet, but I'm anticipating a kick any moment now. So I want to remind you guys to subscribe. Get some new technology coming right up. Share. I got to work on that one. There we go. Share. Not sunny. And do that whatever that, that means like us and if you really want to do something cool because i found out i was reading over the weekend that um youtube really likes it when you click the little bell so there you go click the bell he just I, drew that i know it looks like a, a ghost that got drenched in blood but it, it's a bell <laughs> it's a bloody ghost i tell you a bloody ghost um Anyway, uh, I am always excited to have Chuck on the show. You um, are? He's be yeah, I am. I, I am. I'm not just saying that because you're sitting next to me. Um, <laughs> Chuck has become a really good friend over many, many years. He's been a taxi member for God knows how long. Uh, and he is, in fact, one of our most successful taxi members. Why? Because he figured out a very long time ago, if I make instrumental cues and I make a lot of them and they're really high quality and I put them in a ton of libraries, it'll probably be like cumulative interest. And here we are 15, 20 years later. Something and like that. I can love he it. owns the single largest house in Hollywood. It's 50,000 square feet. <laughs> He's got a private jet. Um, no, he's done really well for himself. The house might have been an exaggeration. He does have a house in Atlanta and a house in Los Angeles and a very nice car in both towns. And he's done it all making music in a relatively small studio. He took a second bedroom in his beautiful condominium, I might add, in Hollyweird. And um, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of outboard gear. He's got a fairly basic studio with the, you know, he's careful with his money. So he buys what he needs, not buys a bunch of crap that he doesn't need. And his stuff sounds really good. So what we're going to do today, I really don't have to even be here. The first half of this show is going to be Chuck playing you stems. He brought stems on a laptop. Okay. So he I put these play... together all last yesterday, actually. And, and you've got one that is, you got two songs that mm -hmm. are what are they or two tracks? The uh, first know. one is a future bass and the second one is <clears throat> um, tension uh, trap. Okay. So um, tell me, you know, honestly, the first time I heard the phrase future bass was probably around 1995. I was sitting with Tony Ferguson, who was like vice president of A&R at Interscope. We were in a hotel room in a Marriott, the Marriott Fort Lauderdale, getting ready to go fishing the next morning. And he kept talking about future bass. And I said, I, I've heard the phrase, but... I don't even know what future bass is, and he couldn't explain it to me. Remember, he was vice president of A&R of a major label, and he couldn't define it. Can and this you? is 1995? Yeah, 95, 96. I thought it came out like mid-2010s. I remember. Really, As a matter of fact. That's when it hit its popularity. or just Somewhere get... over there on my wall of cassettes, I actually have a cassette from this young lady from England 
uh, that Tony gave me that was creating these future bass tracks. And that's why we were having the discussion. Hmm. He handed me the cassette and said, you need to check this young lady out in his very British accent. And, and he couldn't explain future bass. So maybe it was past bass or present bass, but I, I, I remembered his future bass. And I think it was maybe the late 90s. I don't know, whatever. It's a long time I didn't ago. Think it was that and, and it's really hard to get but, um, description. I think it was around for a long time. Um, like as far back as house in the UK, but it, it didn't really take off here for a while. It's very heavy with sense. Well, that Lots could be of, a lot of stuff. So well, this that's what I'm looking healthy. for. It's extremely help, heavy with sense and the wobble yeah. effect. Um, big ass drums. Really? Not just big drums. Yeah. Big ass drums. <laughs> okay. But um, I mean, a lot yeah. of, does I see a lot of jazz chords in there sometimes? Because you could say everything you but, said until jazz chords about mm -hmm. lots yeah. of types of music. Uh, and I listen to Future Bass and go, okay, well, that sounds like this, sounds like that. It's very close to a lot of other stuff, but it's clearly its own definition. And I'm just too old to really get it. <laughs> That's how that works out. But um, anyway, so do you want to start by playing the full track yeah, a little bit? So. Uh, do you want to play it end to end? How long is it? Uh, it looks like it is probably about... I wouldn't stop in the It's like two minutes, two and a half minutes. Okay. I'm going to play the whole thing. Pull back. A little. I'm going to dolly back. Um, you need to come a little closer to me. <coughs> Otherwise, we're going to spend the whole show adjusting the camera. <laughs> so, okay, it's two and a half minutes. So go ahead and play the thing. And then what he's going to do is play it to you broken down layer by layer as he built it so that people can understand um, how he built it. One thing I wanted to... To bring up in this, um, well, actually, both tracks <coughs> that I'm really a stickler on, like when the composers write for me and send me tracks, I'm always have to quite often say, "You guys need to put edit points in here," which is very important. Do, are you talking about like a rest, like a, um, a quarter note or half note rest, or just big stuff that they can cut on, like a big snare, a big kick, or whatever? Just breaks in the music that sound normal. Okay. So I'll point out a bunch in this. Um, yeah, you know what? Every time uh, an edit point comes up, do one of those. I'm going to do the first, like, 14 seconds to show you something. The way I designed this was I start with the chorus and take a show like uh, Kardashians. Please. When, yeah, please. <laughs> but a boom. <laughs> when they have shots of, like, Los Angeles. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Shots <laughs> of, like, Los Angeles coming back from commercial break or right. Calabasas. And they're probably even neighbors with them up here somewhere. <laughs> Kimmy stops by just all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, anyway. And it's usually about 10 to 14 seconds, whatever, and ends on a, a uh, edit point. So it could be something like this. Just... <laughs> ah! Oh, that was me. The Pro Tools crapped out. <laughs> It just ends there and they start doing whatever. Um, so do you time your reverb so that the reverb will have died by the time the next beat comes in so that if somebody wants to edit, they don't have a reverb tail overlapping? Ah, they'll just fade it out usually. The okay. editors. But uh, Makes sense. Anyways, so I'll start back at the beginning and count a few of the edit points that might pop up. Thank you. 
Well, we don't really need to hear the. Okay, so it, in your world, by your description, it is basically a rest. I mean, there's still a reverb mm -hmm. tale going on, but it gives the editor a nice big window to get in there and either end a scene with it mm -hmm. or pick up the next scene at the downbeat. Because if you follows. have a, a track for music from the beginning to the end, there's no place to cut. Right. I mean, this you can get like five or six different cues out of it with, with lots of edit points. I, I want to talk about that because we get some members to take this li very literally and mm -hmm. we'll put, you know, when we say enlisting with great edit points or, you know, quite a few edit points, we'll get people that will send in a 90 second piece with like 10 full Yeah, rest. I've had a few composers that go a little overboard. I'm like, okay, I know I told you to put edit points, but you don't have to have that many and that obvious. <laughs> are, are there, how do you know where to put them? Do you do it sectionally? Like, okay, here's A section, A section, here's building, building, edit point there or do you just do Not, what you feel there's no just where it feels natural and and and, and works and sounds good there's okay. no formula all right you know, people always want like you know the easy start guide so there is no formula that's what we've learned in today's episode there's no formula tell that to the Whatever baby sounds crying natural and it sounds good okay um so now let's break it down track by track all right uh, one thing I thought was kind of cool, instead of starting right on the downbeat, I had a little intro in there, just a one bar, uh, uh, one count intro. So it's kind of cool, I guess. It adds interest without taking you out of the scene. Yeah, it's kind of, I guess, cool how I made it. Um, started with this little loop that I found. It's like a one bar fill loop. Okay. I just needed one little bit of that. And I just cut that and then the other one. And you didn't even, was that part of the drum sample that's in the rest of the thing or was that its own thing? It was, it was just, I think it was maybe like the last. I think it was just right. Is the drum sound the same as the drum sound all the way through the track? No. Well, okay. it's very similar. Okay, the reason yeah. I asked is back in my day, like you, would have had, you, yeah, you would have wanted perfection, but mm -hmm. anything goes nowadays. Especially with electronic yeah. music, yeah. Yeah, interesting. And this other part of the intro was whatever this is. But I was like, well, that last part's kind of cool. So I'm going to over here and change the pitch. And then put them together and get that. And that makes a nice start. How long did it take you to do that when you had the idea and you were actually building the track? I have absolutely no idea. I mean, no. a matter of a few minutes. Like, you didn't spend an hour on that? No, no. I just, I no. probably, I never can. <laughs> no, I probably searched around and was looking for something to make a little fill. Like, oh, that works. And then chopped it up and that and, and I really don't know. Okay. It, I but it wasn't an hour. I'm, no. I'm trying mm -hmm. to make the point that people shouldn't be labor something like that no. and spend, you know, the, everything they do before lunchtime to get that perfect little thing that it will come in time and pretty soon, like almost I, intuitively, you can go, yeah, I don't know. Like I said before, I think we talked on it last time I did it, like you can't spend two hours auditioning 100 different kick drums or, or snares. Just find what you like and go with it. That's a great point. Speaking of kick drums, so I, I guess... Fan. That's you? Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Uh, speaking of kick drums, yes. So I guess we'll start with the drums. There's like, I don't know, a ton of drum tracks. Um, so that first part, it's just... It's a kick. I'm layering two kicks in there. Might be kind of weird, but whatever. Sounds good. Sounds like a chest thumper. <laughs> And uh, let's see, add snare, we were on it. And I f found this little loopy here that had a pretty high snare drum on it too. And I don't know, I put these 808 tight hats in. I don't already... know if they, they can uh, crank it up a little so they can hear. Yeah, that's, I'm just, oh. Well, and bring it back down. Yeah. 
It's just a typical 808 yeah. rhythm. But there's already hats in this. So you normally wouldn't have two different hi-hats playing, but... And you weren't worried about it becoming overly complex? Well, I might take those out, but if I want to have them in, it's my song, and do what I want to. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyways, so far, with just the basic strumming groove, I added another little loop underneath to get some movement. So that's a chorus. And I'll try to go fast because I only have like. Oh, you're actually going to build? I thought you were just playing stems. You're actually going to lay the track out? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to the restroom and I. You know what I had for lunch today? I kid you not. That was my entire lunch. So while you're doing that, I'm going to McDonald's. You want anything? <laughs> no. No thanks. Oh. <laughs> uh, First one, all I have in there is this little percussion loop. I'm trying to bring it intensity down and bring it up a little bit. Along with these little fill thingies. Oops. So then you put those together. This is exactly what I was talking to you about before the show. I was mm -hmm. talking about uh, uh, percussion-only cues. Oh, yeah. Right there. That would get used. If you had nothing more than that for 90 seconds mm -hmm. and built some interest in there, that's a usable cue. Could be. No, it is. No, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then more fills going into verse two. Ah, okay. A second, I'll, I'll solo all the drums. And in verse two, I think I kept that little loop. Oh, hell, I just put that back there too, I guess. And I just started adding, oops, more, a kick, snares, little thing there. Mm. Here's a big thing right here, which is big in electronic music, is the snare roll risers. Go. So that's basically the drums on. I'm going to spend the whole show verses. looking down there, just letting you guys know that now. <laughs> this is fun. And one more cool thing, which is big in this kind of music, are impact hits. Where are they? Oh, there they are. So, so did you buy those or did you create them from layering other stuff? Um, is, does somebody have a library? Both. A lot of these I mean, impacts you can buy. Okay. Um, but they're, they're... A lot of swooshes and... Stuff like that. Back in my day... We had to go to a cave with a garbage oh can God. lid and a drum to make that. Now you can just buy it. Life and is so easy for you kids today. <laughs> yeah, we used to actually record the tape. Yeah. How did that? I love tape. And of course, lots of cymbal crashes. How do you know? It's just experience and instinct when you go, okay, now I've gone too far. I've got too much stuff in there and... Time to stick a fork in it. Yeah. Yeah, I get to that point. I'm like, okay. all right, this is, this is enough. It's getting too full. And one thing we had talked about, I think, when you came over to my place last time is reverse symbols, which are cool. So I actually took this symbol right here. And did a 180. <laughs> and just reversed them. And then I hear it in context. It's always been great. It gives, um, almost creates like a wave. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean like a wave form, I mean like a wave coming in. You forget that it's a symbol and yeah, it's And cool. backwards piano is good for that too. I think yeah? I talked about that last time. And there's some stupid percussion in here. Let's just whatever that is. And there's some 
crappy uh, finger snap here. Whatever. So, anyways, let me. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. I will think that's most of drums. Let me. I should have grouped these together, and I didn't. Bray, can you check the AC, please? Let me just solo these. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm soloing all these. Tracks. All right, while he's soloing. Get something away. Um, I have a couple questions, too, I think. Okay, but more importantly, we have to look at. Uh, where did it go? Oh, no, where did it go? Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's in there? there it is. What? Uh, shoot. Got it. We had a rocket launch last night here in Southern California. This I actually, forgot to look at. This is not my photo. This was a photo from a friend, but they shot off a Falcon Heavy from SpaceX uh, from the Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is about two hours north of us. That's what it looks like when a rocket goes up and the contrail gets mixed up with the air currents and the sun is going down it creates that really neat effect and it's awesome for the people that don't know there was a rocket launch you see them running like hell oh my god nuclear holocaust no it's just a rocket launch anyway okay there i filled the time what you got oh all the drums together from like <laughs> I like the fact that you take something very industrial, kind of, and, and mix the, this like um, quasi African beat in there. Yeah, anything goes. Just... And why do they call it future bass and not future drums? It's not even bass heavy. I don't know where the bass part comes I from. Know. That that is always confused me. I remember when Tony played me that cassette in the hotel room. It, I, I thought it was going to be a bunch of cool bass stuff, and it wasn't. Yeah. So anyway. Um, uh, Bria's got a couple questions, so let's... Ask while I unmute or unsolo these, which okay. I should have grouped yeah. them been easier, but no, I'm a dummy. <laughs> Someone's asking how much is this of this is loops and how much of it is MIDI instruments? How much of it is loops and how much is MIDI? Of the whole song, most of it would be MIDI because I use a lot of synths in here. Serum is one, Avenger is the other. Um, I just showed with this, that was... Uh, some just a few loops there were like kick samples snare samples that i just used by themselves which isn't really a loop it's just a sample um but yeah most of this will be i believe mini okay all right what's up next? just the drums I'm not used to working on a laptop. So I thought you were just bringing, you know, stems that you just play a stem and then here's another stem. I didn't realize you were bringing the actual well, session with I thought you. that's what you wanted. No, I, I, I thought you were just bringing stems just yeah. to go, you know, here's the, the bass and here's the drum, whatever. There's only two bass parts in here. Nothing very exciting. And the verse has this uh, sub bass. Actually, let's get to the part where it's doing a rhythm. It's kind of boring by itself. There yeah. aren't a lot of but exciting the bass sounds. Can't really hear the bass on those, but anyway. Don't make fun of my tiny little <laughs> ass tan. They don't make those anymore, do they? Yeah, they make some derivative of mm. them. So I mentioned synth heavy. Um, mm. Just starting back on the first part, I got like three synth parts. First one is this. I'll turn it a little bit. Wow, how did you play that so evenly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. My timing's yeah. impeccable. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, ooh. Did you side, side chain that stuff? Or is the sample that, just... That one actually, I, I did some of them, but that one I think... Just had super like slow tackle. And those three together. Uh, and 
verse has this kind of boring thing, boring by itself. I think that came from Serum. Along with this side chain sound. The only other thing is this, which is just very subtle, but it's kind of cool. Which came, f stop, came from this loop that I found or something. I only wanted this, that little section there. So you can hear me unmute or unsolo those. You can hear it in context. He makes it look so easy. It is. <laughs> There's a few other. How many tracks are in this whole thing? Do you think? Um, I didn't count, but there's a lot. Right? Yeah, <laughs> more than you would normally go for. I mean, uh, well, it depends, well, what, I mean, depends what kind of music you're doing. I mean, this has yeah electronic music has a lot of stuff happening usually. Like there's more synth lines. Wow. That's because that's towards getting towards the middle of the song. I'm trying to build it, and then this thing comes in. Here towards the end. But here is a cool thing. I was talking about the wobble synth. Now, I made that in Serum by automating the uh, filter cutoff. Uh, well, actually, I did that in Pro Tools, but I made the sound in Serum by putting like 12 layers of sine waves on there wow. or something and putting the LFA on that. It, so, without the automation and the filter cutoff, it would sound like this. Lady after, which is go. Very I think cool. I'll stay between sixteenth note triplets and eighth note triplets to get that. Um, you really do make it look easy, mm -hmm. and I know you're gonna say it is it is easy, yeah. but it's easy for you, Chuck. <laughs> I, it, you know, I realize it's not rocket science, but it's. It's experience. You already know when you start going down a rabbit hole for something. Mm -hmm. Intuitively, I'm sure that you already know this is about a 70% chance of working out. It's worth chasing. Mm -hmm. Or, no, that's a stupid idea. I'm not going to bother. So that's that's what experience gives you. And sometimes I'll say, oh, this kind of stinks. So I'll put it away in maybe a month or two, whatever, later come back. Like, Ooh, that's actually got potential. Now that's a chance to get away from it. And it's fresh again. And next thing is just a basic Rhodes piano. Playing the chords. I think it's an A major 7, B6, um, C sharp minor to D major 9. Getting jazzy with the D major 9. Yeah, right, uh, with yeah. this one. A little growl on the Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, that came from Keyscape, which is made by Spectrosonics. Yeah. And they their stuff is they're every kind of Rhodes and... I believe that Spectrosonics will be represented at the Road Rally this Ooh. year. Um, we have a company named Ilio, which is the U.S. distributor mm, yeah. for Vienna Symphonic Library, and I believe that one of the brands under their umbrella, I believe I could be wrong, but I think I'm right, uh, I think they've got Spectrosonic mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah. And I know they're planning on selling stuff at a rally discount. So for those of you who want to beef up your library of sounds, save your money, bring your credit mm -hmm. card, 
and don't tell your spouse, but you're coming to the Red Rally <laughs> to shop. And I can give a nice tip about the, the roads and also mainly acoustic guitar is a big one. Um, you record the, let's just take acoustic guitar for instance. Record it, sounds awesome, sounds amazing. Then you're trying to play the track, you're like, it's just not working out. Why is it so muddy? Well, because by itself it sounds great. Yeah. But you take off, it's got the whole spectrum of sound. Take off the low end, mm -hmm. and it might sound very tinny. Mm hmm. But by it itself. Will, by itself, like that, but it will fit. If you're doing solo acoustic guitar, of course you'd have all that. But this is just the road. I took off all the, the low ends because that was kind of interfering and making it muddy. You don't want mud. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going to the spa and going to the mud bath or something. I don't know. So, and this, I used Serum and came up with a little melody. And hear it in context. Oops. Oh, I've got that thing. <laughs> Didn't mute that. Oops. Okay, and just there's other like lead lines in here that I can't believe how much stuff. there's a lot in this one. I gotta hurry to know we're gonna Yeah, we got fifteen minutes. Oh, crap. And then And I made I cannot believe the amount of stuff you have. And I put in one uh, uh melody line in verse two. I use the low and the high. Together set. that. And this is a nice little just only in verse two. I don't know why I always did it here. But I think I covered most of the stuff, and there was pressure to go to the other ones. Um, where did it end at? Let's let them do. Okay, so, play it from the top. Okay. And normally 
don't make tracks two minute, two, two, and, two and, half. and a half minutes long. Usually like a minute and a half is good. One last thing on this, check out this part. Oops. It's actually nice. a free plugin called Isotope, um, made by Isotope. Uh, and it's actually free, so you can find it online. Uh, Isotope Vinyl. Hmm. We can do that. Right. I think that's pretty cool. All right, let me close this out. Um, I want to point out something. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about all this technical stuff, and I see everybody talking about software and everything. The one thing we didn't talk about that's really important is the vibe, the emotion, the feel, the atmosphere it creates. It, it's a sense of, it almost feels like freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's so important. You were able, because I, I don't want people to walk away with the, like, oh my gosh, you know, it's got to have 164 tracks in it, because it probably mm. does. Um, it, what you've done is tastefully layered stuff, so that it, it's a very glossy look at freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very professional of you, Chuck. Good job. <laughs> the next song is completely different. Yeah, very moving on to the next one. Ominous. Well, it's okay. Trap. Actually, Trap began in Atlanta, I found out. Um, so Bree and I were having a conversation Friday afternoon about trap. Uh, we were talking about how trap is so repetitious and so boring. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to see how you made it not boring. And I call it trap tension. That's kind of redundant because trap is very tense and ominous and dark. Yeah. But it's used so much in, in hip hop these days, like all the mumble rappers. <laughs> Ugh, and Cardi B. She's <laughs> not one of my favorites. Um, you know, she watches the show. What show? Love this and Hip Hop? No, this show. Oh, this show. Oops. <laughs> Yo, Cardi, good to have you in the chat room. I love Cardi. I love Cardi. She's funny as hell. <laughs> um, so. You could hear a melody like that in an old piece done with string, you know, I mean, that goes back 50 years, mm -hmm. and it still works. Yeah. Edit point. Yeah. I gotta say, you've made it interesting. <laughs> Want to make it makes me want to bust out my best mumble rap. Oh no! Don't do that. <laughs> that was more one minute thirty. Which yeah, is better. Um, and what structurally did this? I didn't even pay attention. Does it have a B section in, it or is it all A? It's uh, sort of intro, then kind of a chorus, breakdown, verse, chorus. That's about it. Okay. Um, well, I've got like five minutes, so I'll kind of try to go fast. Do you have a particular formula that you use when you're building instrumental tracks? Would you say um, the vast majority of my instrumental cues have an A, A, B, A, or again, do you just, because you've been doing it so long, your instinct tells you, all right, I'm working in this genre and this feels right for this genre and you're just intuitive about That's it kind of more like you don't it, yeah. sit down don't, with a plan you don't take a get a legal pad and okay. write you know 16 bars of this and eight of that no when okay. i do a cue i never know how it's going to end up or where it's going to go i just start fiddling around with stuff and it just grows from something to or nothing to something uh, never, it says like a lot about creativity because you know, sometimes uh, people will say to me, what do I have to do to succeed in the music industry? And I say, you know, i got to be honest with you and tell you that instrumental cues are a great way to earn a living. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they go, oh, that stuff, you know, it, it's like so formulaic. Um, 
there's a ton of creativity in this stuff. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I think the, the more experienced you are at it and the better you are at it, the more creative you become. You know, yeah. cause you've, you've broken the bonds of, uh, I don't know. You know <laughs> because you're so good, you're free to do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. and, and you know before you open the door to something that there's a decent probability it's going to work or not. So you're not wasting a lot of time searching and, and listening, sitting there listening for the right snare for a week. Yeah, That's something that so important that you said, I think last time we did a show from your house that... You know, you've got your arsenal and, and and you know what to do. And I was also impressed with the last song you spent. You put so much yourself into layering so that the sounds, because I hate it when taxi members, not that they're doing anything wrong, but they'll say, oh, yeah, that's Omnisphere. That's this or that's mm -hmm. that. And, and they're calling out, the, oh, yeah, I, I know that because I've got that. You couldn't identify that stuff because you've got so many layers packed into a sound that it's got your own signature. I um, normally don't put that much stuff in a track, but I guess the feature based stuff kind of... That one had a ton. That had a lot. That, that's more than <laughs> so usual. So tell us what the... We've only got a few minutes on this one, so tell us what you got in here. Uh, just the drums. I mean, I shouldn't... I don't need to play every single drum. Lots. Just added all sorts of reverberated snares and claps. Um... Okay, let me not break down the drums. That's whatever. Um, does the do you have the reverb on the individual tracks, or do you also add reverb to your mix? Or do you base individual tracks? Yeah, I don't okay. mean, mean make the on the on the master. Mix well, or? yeah, I mean you know when you sit down with a multi-track, obviously you're not going to put you know reverb across your entire mm -hmm. um, uh, you know uh, stereo out <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. across your mix bus. Uh, but do you? Do you lay it down with the sound when you create it and put it down, or do you add it after? Oh, I like like send it to an aux channel and okay, and have it a second like if I'm going to turn it down some. If, and once you it's like once you print it, it's there. You, right, you that's like I, it, I, I, that would have been the more intelligent way to ask yeah. the question. <laughs> do you print reverb or, or no. you know do it from a send? Got it. Uh, there's other little delayed clap thing in there. Um, Cool little riser effect. That it's so key that you put that stuff in because our listings always say you know uh, looking for um, mm. dynamic builds and drops and you got to do stuff to give it forward momentum. Mm -hmm. So it's not just laying there like a locks, which would be so easy to do uh, with trap. And of course, all the oh wait, that's not it. Uh, picked the wrong one and meant to. Well, where's. Oh, I mean. <laughs> so much stuff. That looks like a trilobite. All those things. Oh, here it is. Cool. All those fun things. And. Get down here to the. I know someone talked about the brass hits. Got these. Almost a bramp or whatever they call those things for uh -huh. that they use in trailers all the time. And here's a, a really big one. And then this is kind of a string hit. Mixed with that, it's almost like a delay. Hmm. And then all three in there. And. And I made a little, oops, stop, a little Celeste line. Adds a little mystery. Mm-hmm. And then where is that? Uh, I made up this melody. Oh, no. Oh, here it is, yeah. So I wrote this melody and played it on Serum. Second, this 
is some weird thing that I found. It sounded like this at first. some weird loop and I changed the key the timing <laughs> but it works because those notes hit at a certain place you can kind of hear the again it adds to the, mm -hmm. the the mood the tension and of course gotta have two little bells <laughs> Do you think about the mood as you're creating? Do you, do you come up with a sound, go down a rabbit hole to create one of those little layered effects or sound and think, now that's taken me away from tension, now it's a little too happy, and will you make a call and go, okay, I like what I did, but it's not right for this, and mm -hmm. kind of keep a mental yeah. picture of that for the future? Or if it starts Very. to get too happy, I'll make a different kind of cue out of it. Right, there you go. Um, there's these little pluck sounds. Those together like that. Another part in the next section. Oops, gotta take those off so you can hear them. All right, that, there it is. Another one. That's in the breakdown section. So that I think is most of the parts it sounds um you've maintained kind of a badass vibe even though it's kind of glossy mm -hmm. um it still has this like it's some, gotta be dark and ominous. yeah something's gonna happen mm -hmm. so uh, I'm, I'm impressed by the fact that you don't get carried away that you get all these layers in you the sounds st less standard and out of the box and recognizable you don't have to do that because an editor's not going to sit there and go "Ooh, look what he did <laughs> it's deep in the track but the overall effect is this sounds a little more lush it's it just you know it's the difference between a volkswagen and a mercedes mm -hmm. are both german cars but there's a difference mm -hmm. so good on you play someone the someone just asked her what's the base it's all 808s it's what? It's all 808s. Okay. It's all 808 uh, bass. It sounds horrible by itself. <laughs> but in the track. That's what Frankenstein heard in his head when they plugged the wires <laughs> into the electrodes uh -huh. and turned on the switch. <laughs> that was the first thing he heard right there. Um, um, play it from the top one time. Okay. See, we're losing partners. We're losing what? I think we're losing again. Oh. I knew it. Don't tell Chuck. <laughs> loves it. I was laughing because... iCarly loves it. Yeah. Laughing because um, Cartman Norris, Norris posted the um, Brave score and Paul Coteau and, and C.K. Well, hey, don't, don't tell Chuck. Well, I already <laughs> saw it. I knew we were going to lose, so... I'm sorry. I was expecting it. <laughs> They're a young team. Eh, uh, they haven't lost yet. Man, 
great job. Seriously, it sounds like a record, not like a library track. Thank you. And that's impressive because I know that you put these together pretty quickly. I mean, just, you know, how long do you, you generally crank out a track a day? I mean, if you had to like average it. Yeah. Yeah. That's impressive. Experience, my friends, experience. How many years have you been building this stuff? Uh, probably since the late 90s. Okay, so 20 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yay. Um, let's do a drawing now in the middle of the show, and then let's move on to talking about road rally stuff. In a moment, we're going to bring the lovely, talented Bria McTavish on the show. We're going to talk Road Rally, which is coming up in three and a half weeks, November 1st through the 4th, right here in Los Angeles. Um, I got to say, this year's Road Rally, I know every year I say this year's Road Rally is going to be better than last year, but I seriously had, the staff will remember this, two months ago, two and a half months ago, I said, I've got the schedule for the ballroom ready to go. And then... I just looked at it late one night. I was here and I was looking at it. I, go, I can do even better. So I literally threw away about 80% of it, started all over, and I'm really, really <laughs> happy with the schedule. So now we are going to give away a copy of Composer Catalog software invented by none other than our very own Keith LeBrant, who's a taxi member and a programmer. And, excuse me, Composer Catalog. Oh, man, that tasted <laughs> You know what that tasted like? Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Sorry. That's what you get. <laughs> My diet today consisted of rock star and beef jerky. I think I had a cookie in there somewhere, too. Anyway, um, Composer Catalog helps you keep your music organized and tag it and all that good stuff. And it comes in a Mac version or a PC version. So whoever wins it, you're going to need to let Bria know. Um, taxi TV at taxi.com is the email address. So now what we're going to do is anybody who doesn't already have a copy and would like to get, I know a lot of you guys already do, anybody who wants one, um, type in a plus one and then I will do one of these, run my finger. Oh, actually, I'm going to have Bria do it. Um, that way I don't have to do that. Um, and she's going to pick a winner, chicken dinner. So here we go. Three, two, one plus one. I see. All, oh, Bob Gunnerfeld, by the way, thank you very much for the two giant bags of coffee. Hmm. Uh, the other day, Box showed up from Amazon with two big bags of coffee in it. And uh, we didn't know from whence it came. And then somebody in the staff said, oh, yeah, Bob Gunnerfeld. He was saying, my mentor or mentoree last year. Really? Mm -hmm. At well, my table and a. And he's a very nice man because yeah. he sent us coffee. And it was the perfect time of year to send it. Um, he's up in Traverse City, Michigan. Really? I used to go to. I went to summer camp in uh, Keewaden, Michigan, Camp Maplehurst, which is right next to Traverse City. Um, I love Michigan. It's beautiful. I got shot in the butt with oh rock, with rock salt from a shotgun. First thing, and Bria's got her eyes shut. She's picking a winner. <laughs> David S J H. David S J H. David. They're still flying through. They are still flying through. Anyway, uh, at summer camp, they told us no matter what, do not climb over the fence and pick cherries out of the cherry orchard. Which you say that to a twelve-year-old, it's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, I heard some guy Don't. screaming something in Spanish, and then I didn't actually hear the blast of the shotgun, but mm -hmm. heard like a whizzing sound, and my butt got peppered with okay. rock salt. Uh, and I remember being face down on a table with a nurse with tweezers mm -hmm. and isopropyl alcohol digging rock salt out of my butt, which for a 12-year-old boy to have a female nurse doing that to you, it was horrifying, and I've been scarred for life. It explains so much about me. <laughs> the moral of this story is don't pick cherries because you will get shot with rock salt. And the winner of Composer Catalog, do you have a real name yet? David S.J.H. That's such a weird last name. Maybe he's Swedish. Maybe. Or, or from Iceland. <laughs> anyway, David, congratulations. Uh, I have never used this, but I've heard wonderful things about it from our many taxi members who have it. He will be sponsor, a sponsor at the Road Rally this year. So 
you can buy a copy at the road rally i don't want to pop your speakers and i don't want you to pop my speakers no. you can now unplug um all right and with that uh we're going to now be so you got to scoot up literally like touching well, the, I think, with Bria's, oh you want to put her in the middle Bria, probably, okay because she's the one that's Okay, um, you need to move your chair so she can get her chair. I've got an idea. Why don't you stand up and put your butt in that chair, and then she can have this chair. Oh, that's good. There we go. Can I sneak off to the bathroom real quick? No. Go, go. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, Chuck is going to the men's room. And ladies Hello. and gentlemen, Miss Bria McTavish. Hello, everyone. Our official road rally expert. Why is she an expert? Because she's been going to the road rally for like three years. She started when she was 14 years old. It's actually my 10th year this year. There, there you go. Well, I, I didn't want to give your age away. I made you a copy, too. Oh, thank so you. You're so you're ready to go. The road rally is three and a half weeks away. Um, and I'm going to talk about this first one, and then I'm going to let you grab the next one. I have this for you if you want it. Thank you. So the we have posted that online go to taxi.com slash rally with a small mm -hmm. r it will take you to the page with all the road rally stuff and the first thing at the top of the page is the grand ballroom schedule we have about 10 other things that are going to be posted hopefully tonight yeah. they are done and ready to go it's just a matter of me going back and forth with our um web guy to get the stuff up tonight so adam if you're watching the show you and i <laughs> tonight dude um Anyway, the ballroom schedule, new panel submission process. Three out of the four panels. Uh, in the past, we've had problems. Uh, people put CDs in boxes, and we draw the CDs out of boxes randomly, and people complain, oh my goodness, uh, you didn't play my CD, and are you really picking them randomly? And yes, we are. And CDs are sold fashion. There was a, a litany uh, of complaints about CDs. So we have been using... Um, a web service called Disco uh, to submit our music to the industry because we used to package everything into these really large files and send them via you send it or whatever Hightail whatever it's called this week and uh, the industry has moved away from that so we started using Disco to send our stuff and then one day I had a brainstorm and the brainstorm was we can build playlists in Disco we can have the members submit via listings Chuck's back from the men's room <laughs> Johnny Carson never got to say that. Uh, anyway, we can have. Here, do you want me? I can scooch in on teensy before. Okay, yeah. all three of us are in here. Kind of. Man, you might I have, have to, to move this thing back yeah. a lot. There we go. I think there okay, we go. so. Um, but notice I've got the microphone nice and close so it can hear everything. <laughs> so anyway, this year, what we're doing is we're running three listings that I was supposed to get out today, but I did not. So they will go out tomorrow. They are road rally specific listings. If you are not coming to the road rally and you do not want your music um, played on panels, then don't submit to the listings. And what we're gonna do is randomly have stuff played off of the playlist in the grand ballroom during the panel and anything that doesn't get played will come back to taxi world headquarters after the road rally the screeners will go through it they will find the stuff that's best of breed and they will send that stuff or we will send that stuff the playlist of the curated material that didn't get played on the panel will then go to the panelists from that panel so yay uh it's a cool new system i hope that it works well i think it will you don't need to know how to use Disco. All you have to do is just make a submission like you would make a normal taxi submission. But when we land on your piece of music in the ballroom and we call your name, and if you don't go, yo, I'm in here, we're not gonna play your music. Because mm -hmm. it got very tiresome in years past with people dropping like five CDs in the box to make sure they got picked. Not cool, <laughs> not fair, yeah. not even that much. Um, and then we'd call out their name and they wouldn't be in the room. Yeah, so, which isn't worth it for them anyway. Well, yeah, they want the people on the panel to hear it and go, that person's a genius, bring them to me because I'm going to <laughs> sign them. I'm going to put their music in this TV show. They're going to become famous all because they put five CDs in a box and didn't bother to come to the panel. 
So there you go. While Bria <laughs> covers the next subject, which is the one-to-one -one mentors, I'm going to go make the air conditioner a little warmer because I can see her rolling her sleeves. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Um, no, yeah, you're so... Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. You're cold. Yeah, so one thing that's really awesome about the Road Rally is that we always do one-to-one -one mentors. Um, so if you're a taxi member, you get... Uh, it's 15 minutes, right? Yes. 15-minute yes. session with the mentor of your choice. Um, so that's, people always ask us, like, why do people line up before the rally? Um, and why is there a big uh, <laughs> registration line and stuff like that? And, and the reason for that is because that way you can get your first pick on your one-to-one -one mentor. So I think we'll be announcing who those will be. Tonight, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, or tomorrow At as well, latest. too. So that means that you can start figuring out who your top choices are, um, which is good because what always happens to the people that are, you know, doing, manning those signups is that people get up to the front. They've had all day. They've had weeks to decide <laughs> well, who they want. Yeah, it's like three weeks, right. And then they get up there and they're like, hmm. Right, should I go with I this? I do this. Who should I, what, who should I pick? And then they're <laughs> like, oh, because there's Chuck so many Chuck did mentoring online. last year, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, for instance, if you want to sit down and play Chuck one of your tracks and say, Chuck, what could I be doing better? He would tell you. Yeah. I'm doing it on Friday this day, this year, I think. Okay. There you go. Awesome. Chuck's doing it on Friday. Um, but, yeah, it'll <laughs> say on those, like, when they're um, – who's on what day and stuff like that. So you'll you'll know that. Um, one thing that uh, we want to make really clear, too, is we're not doing CDs um, for the one-to-one one 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 mentors. Um, so bring a way to play it on... Um, your phone. Your phone. You could your, bring your computer in, your laptop. Yeah, you don't br bring your desktop. Don't please. bring a desktop, though, please. Um, <laughs> can you imagine? Got to get it out of my backpack. iPad, yeah. whatever you have it on, just make sure that you have it so that there's an aux cord. So obviously, if you have one of those fancy new iPhones, bring your dongle with you so that way. What's your language? You can, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're a nice young lady. Be proper. Okay. Well, that's what it's called. Um, so yeah, make sure you bring a, a dongle, unsaid thing. Um, with I didn't you. even think okay. about that because you know we've got thirty mentors working. We can't have dongles with all of them. No. So you got to bring a dongle that goes from whatever that connector is that Apple's got. I don't know because do I have an Apple phone? No, nope, I got a Samsung. Um, Lightning. A lightning uh, connector that goes to lightning an, to dongle adapter to eighth inch um, mini. mini mini yeah no, auxiliary yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah just make sure you bring that stuff and but yeah no CDs um, so oh, yeah new one. just remember that um, because it's just a mess and it's a lot to have all those boom boxes <laughs> and they always go awry so I took um, one last year. I was going, I, I you tripped, tripped over on one? I tripped over a cord and went boom. Oh, wow. It's fine, but. Not good. Sorry. Yeah, th th <laughs> that's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. So this is why you have to bring. At, at anybody's your convention phone. but ours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, why don't you tell them about the music industry eat and greet? Uh, we renamed the mentor lunches because people were confusing that with the one to one mentors. So. Tell them, Bria. Yeah, so the m music industry eat and greet, formerly known as the mentor lunches, because it was confusing. Um, I said that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so they are, um, we have tickets on sale for those. That's the only thing that costs money um, at the rally. Um, just Which we because, don't make a profit. The exactly, hotel needs the money um, to pay for the food. Yeah, because uh, you're just paying for a very nice meal. Um, cheerfully served to you. Um, <laughs> cheerfully. Yes. It's actually good hotel chicken. And yeah, it do is. you know 30% of the people who signed up are, in fact, signing up for the vegetarian or vegan lunches this year? Awesome. I was shocked. Oh, I would wow. have thought it would have been like 5%, but it's a huge it's number really of people. It's really growing now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't worry, the vegetarian is vegan, gluten free, um, dairy free, obviously, since it's vegan. Kosher, um, halal, every I don't know of, about that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I mean, Definitely probably, not kosher. But you never know. No. Um, <laughs> not no. kosher. Yeah, but uh, so 
basically, I mean, we have those tickets on sale. Um, you can get them through your hosting site, um, the same place that you went to sign up for the rally. Um, but uh, yeah, but we can also go to the taxi.com slash rally and click on the link there. There's a link to where you can buy them there. Um, so I just have my one tip for the, the mentor lunch from my, uh, going on 10 years of rally going is to, um, you know, make sure you get in line for the mentor lunch early. So that way you have a good choice of seat because you want to sit next to the mentor so you can hear them. Um, it gets, let's address that issue. Yeah. Yeah, It does get noisy because everybody's talking over everybody. Um, there's really no way to fix it other than like having, 150 people in the room said 300. Mm -hmm. Anything more than 10 people, it gets noisy. So the bottom line is, Bree is right. Sit next to the mentor um, so you can actually hear them. And you may have to do some of this. We've actually had a couple of mentors over the years that bring little megaphones with them, yeah, which is Liz quite Yeah, Liz Redwing funny. does that because she has a very quiet voice. Um, she, did you ever see the soft talkers on Saturday Night Live? She's that quiet. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Um, but yeah, so my tip is always to sit next to the mentor because you'll get the most con like contact with them. Even if they're, like, they're really nice, they'll talk to everyone at the table, but obviously it'll be easier to hear them. Um, but you'll know that it's their uh, seat because there's no food at it. So, yeah, because they don't get to eat. No, we, we feed them. We feed them. We do. Don't worry. We feed the mentors before they sit down. Unfortunately, we have to feed them like Subway because we can't give them the full-on multi-course meal because how would they schlep it from table to table? Yeah. Um, is there any truth to the fact that Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby will be mentoring this year? Uh, well, um, as far as I know, Bill Cosby is in jail right now, so oh, there's right. no way. And, and um, Harvey Weinstein's on his way, so yeah, sorry, so, dudes, you're Yeah, not. no, that's not happening, so no need to worry. Right. Um, It'll be a pervert-free... Uh... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you mentoring Chuck? <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so, anyway... Um, so also there's a ton of classes that's, uh, you know, really useful. I mean, so the, the panels are amazing. And, uh, if you don't have a class to go to, you should definitely to go to a panel and let's talk about, <laughs> I'm looking at her notes. Um, let's talk about the kinds of classes that are offered. Oh, you want me to talk about it? <laughs> you made the notes. I did make the notes. So I'm, there's, I'm like there's, serving them up. You got to hit them. The great thing is, I mean, we have classes for pretty much everyone. So it, it ranges. I mean, there's amazing songwriting classes, production, um, the business side of things, um, just about like music licensing, even marketing and like social media classes, um, performance classes. Um, even web design with like Banzoogle and stuff. So you love Banzoogle. I I'm... love Banzoogle. I, yeah. I have a Banzoogle site, and I was very honored because I was the like on their, their oh really um, pamphlets for the rally for a few years, which is wow. great. Yeah, but yeah, I love Banzoogle. They're great to work with. Uh, small plug. I'm not getting paid. Right, and and, <laughs> and frankly, Dave Cool. His real last name is mm -hmm. Cool is one of the coolest guys you'll ever meet. He's such a giver. That guy, seriously, if you needed to hang out with him till like 10 o'clock at night with him stepping you through, you could do this to make your website better, do that. The software is stupidly simple to use. Like mm -hmm. literally, if you've never done a website, you could build a website with Banzoogle. Oh, I, I did it. mine in that. Yeah? yeah? The new one? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I thought, oh, I could never do that. And my friend Frank showed me. Oh, it's so easy. And I was like, Oh wow! I can do this. This is so uh, I can I can make changes, add yeah, really... composers, add tracks, anything. Wow! Yeah, it's really... I, I just looked at his website yesterday. It's very it. impressive. Yeah, well, it's it's just so easy for for someone, and it's perfect for musicians because a lot yeah. of the sites like um, like Squarespace or whatever, it's not really geared towards musicians. Um, so yeah. <laughs> little mini Bansugo plug in the middle of our rally. <laughs> well, but it's all from the heart, you know. It is, um, it is. They didn't pay me to say that, so. Or um, me. Yeah. Or me. But yeah, uh, <laughs> tips for that. I mean, be on time and, uh, you know, get a, to get a good seat because some of the classes will fill up. A lot um, of the classes fill yeah. up. And then we have like 50 people in the doorway going, I can't believe I can't get in. Well, yeah, just well, show up on time, Show up sucker. on time, yeah. Because uh, cause that's that's the thing. And don't, you know, don't sleep in and, uh, you and know, And don't stay it. up till 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> drinking on the helipad on the roof of the hotel. <laughs> Chuck? <laughs> I missed that helipad one, but. 
I might have been drinking till four in the morning, but I didn't find that a bad party. But yeah, um, yeah, but the classes are great, especially, I mean, that's the thing, especially if you're new to songwriting. Um, when I first came to the rally, I was 14 years old. I thought I was the greatest songwriter in the history of the earth. And then I learned very quickly that I was not. Heartbreaking. Um, and, uh, but the classes that I went to there, um, there's so many that are really good for just like learning structure and, and you know, how to... Um, make sure things are interesting and stuff. It's just like so useful. Even if you think like you are, you know, pretty good at songwriting. I mean, there's ways to get so much better at it. Um, and those classes are really, really useful for that. Um, kind of delving deep into that. Um, Let's talk about the fact that this year, Angel on our staff had a really good idea. We have added classes at night. Internally, we call it night school. Because, <laughs> um, you know, daytime's driver's ed, nighttime's night school. Um, so there are a handful of classes that will be happening at night. I believe they start at 6.30 yeah, and go till 8 p.m. I think you're right, yeah. Um, and the reason that we're doing that is so many people for so many years have said, oh my gosh, I, I can't go to the class I want to go to and I can't be in the panel I want to go to. So we spread the classes out a little bit um, this year and we offer night classes. So there you go. Um, night court. Hopefully nobody night court. No, hopefully nobody <laughs> will need that. Yeah. Um, were you going to say something? No? Ooh, I'm just laughing. No, he's oh, laughing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you thought something was funny on the show? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love Chuck. We have so much fun together. Um, Okay, let's talk about the song career and production bar sessions, which are also at night. Yeah, so never fear for guests that are coming that are like, oh, I want to get a, you know, do a one-to-one -one mentor, but I can't because that's only for members. Um, and or... So if, they can go to the song career production bar thing yeah. at night, which is essentially like a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, it is. Um, so those are first come, first serve. And basically you just, you know, line up and you get... 15 minutes I think again you do. Um, with these people and um, you uh, there's for song uh, songs so like songwriting um, a songwriting guru right and then a like career person guru so it could be like a social media person or like a or a music attorney you want 15 minutes of the music yeah. attorney without paying for it come to the road rally Thanks. when is it November 1st through November 4th where is it Los Angeles California mm -hmm. There you go. And then production. So like, you know, someone, a producer, engineer, someone like that. But they're really useful um, and people really like them. They fill up really quick. So make sure if you want to get in on one of those and you didn't get to, maybe you didn't have a chance to get a one-to-one -one mentor. Um, those are great because they're first come, first serve. You just line up and, um, you know, you fill out. Uh, Do they give away free drinks? No. No? Okay. Well, I, I walk because I walk by and see these really long lines, and I know that generally speaking, people only make really long lines for free food or free drinks. <laughs> it's for free mentoring. Oh. Yeah. Free the, being the operative word. The other thing, yeah. Um, yeah, so other than that, we also do have, because people are asking, um, you know, about listening sessions, I think, for non, like, film and TV. Um, so we do have also listening and feedback sessions, which are going to be in that same, like, later time slot, so 6.30 to 8, correct? No, not all of them. Not all so, of them? No, I don't believe they are. Uh, oh, well, no, uh, then never mind. <laughs> hang on. Yeah, let's not... I could be wrong or you could be wrong, but I can tell you one thing. We're both not right. Okay. Well, there <laughs> um, you go. Um, but yeah, as... in feedback sessions. He's got the, all, the whole schedule just laid out on the couch across <laughs> from us. Yeah, I've got many iterations of the schedule laid out. And I have... There's like 32 pages of stuff that Angel put together yesterday and I re-edited today. And this says old as of 10 8 18. So, yeah, there's a newer yeah. version. But um, Pop and Urban will be Friday, November 2nd from 6 30 to 8. You could have been right about that one. Two so, of them are. Uh, two of them, what? 
or uh, th at that spot. Well, yeah, but don't get ahead of them, you know. Anyway, Saturday, <laughs> November 3rd, we've got one from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Then Sunday, this is where it gets different. This is where I prove Bria wrong because they're not all at night. <laughs> Sunday, November 4th from 10.45 uh, a.m. to 12.15 p.m. And then Sunday, November 4th, 1.45 p.m. to 3.15 p.m. What these are specifically designed for is we realized we'd gotten so film and TV heavy in the Grand Ballroom um, but it was frustrating. About four or five years ago, I noticed that fewer and fewer people were sh showing up for the panels where we had A&R people from labels and songwriting experts, producers, whatever, on listening panels, and the ballroom was like half empty. So what we did was we moved these and made them specifically for label, song, and artist pitch type stuff, put them in a ballroom that holds 500 people upstairs, and so now we've got... Um, Friday, we've got Pop and Urban going on from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Saturday, we've got Rock and Singer Songwriter going on from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Sunday, we've got Country and Christian going on from 10.45 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. And then Sunday from 1.45 to 3.15, we've got Jazz and EDM. So for those of you who would be interested in getting feedback from a record label perspective, a songwriting perspective, a producer, publisher's perspective versus film and TV um, specific feedback. Um, this stuff is not about film and TV and it happens in the ballroom on the second floor. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And, and if you want to hang out with me, you can come to those because I'm going to be hosting them this year. So. <laughs> yes, also noteworthy. The person who hosted them last year, we actually had some com complaints um, that uh, he wasn't picking stuff as across the board as he should have been, maybe. Uh, I wasn't in there, so I don't know. The bottom line is we have a new system this year mm -hmm. where you will be handed a ticket like you would use at a carnival. And you will, you know, there's like two of them with matching numbers. So one goes into a box, one goes into your left hand, Got only in your left hand. <laughs> and then um, Bria will say, pick a ticket out of a box and go, mm -hmm. ticket number 0024. And you go, here I am. And then you bring up your CD and she will play your CD for the panelists. Yeah, so it's more random. It's going to be a lot easier um, to make sure that it is it is random and that nobody's getting picked because they have a big like a larger case or something like that you know fluorescent I, i've noticed that things with fluorescent pink cd yeah. cases get picked all the time yeah when i did one of them i tried to just like like go like this but it's it's hard um especially if you know people's and cds are big and weird to choose randomly and so. some people will put like five cds in a box to up their chances those people very very bad do not come to the road yeah but don't worry i'm not going to give you more than one ticket so, that's right. That's no matter how happen. much you pay her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about the, uh, we talked about that. And oh. Yes, Peter, those are CD friendly. And I think we should be able to, this might be, you know, Good up question. in the air, but we might be able to use, I mean, I'm assuming we can probably do phones too there because they'll have an aux cord. They will have an aux cord, but, um, well, you're going to have to remind them to have the aux cord there, but also... I know they've got one up there because they, at the open mics, yeah, people, for tracks. Have, yeah, people have gotten up and played tracks off their phones, what have you. But again, this is not a dongle free zone. You got to bring your dongle. Okay. Yeah. We're not uh, responsible for dongles. Dongles. Um, <laughs> yes. who, who was it that came up with the I word don't know. dongle? I think it's and, a very funny word. And, and <laughs> it is. And why did they choose dongle? Okay. Um, want to talk about what to bring? Uh, yeah, I mean, what to bring. Uh, yeah, so uh, some people <laughs> call us and ask, what do I bring? Do I need to bring CDs? Do, do they do it bring? in that voice? Yes. That must some, be horrifying. Some do. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like, do I? what do I need to bring? Do I need to bring business cards? How do I need to dress? Do I need to wear a suit? P I get these questions. So Just for a hoodie, T-shirt, and jeans. You're good. Yeah, attire, wear whatever you want, as long as you are decent we don't care right Just to follow like no, normal law no flesh showing anywhere no flesh gloves wear gloves <laughs> okay um yeah business cards are great uh definitely bring your business cards uh great idea to have a link to you where i guess people could go um this is you know i've noticed the next thing on your list is cds and, and 
I'm conflicted on this because yeah, people go, oh, so D CDs, they're so old school. It makes me look old school. Well, that's true. But if you give somebody your music on a flash drive, there's a pretty good chance that they're just going to wipe the flash drive and use it for personal stuff <laughs> after the rally. Um, it happens because uh, flash drives are reusable. CDs are not. Um, and I always have a CD player in my in my room and I get CDs from members and take up there and listen so so yeah. there you CDs go are good so too. it depends i think personally i think that the best thing is to be like how is what's the as ask them like do you like cds should i give you a link like what's best for you actually that's a great idea having a link you know a very short easy to type in link on your mm -hmm. business card is a really good idea um thumb drives are a little dangerous because you don't know that somebody might not have a virus on there not yeah. by intent but you know and now for like a music supervisor your whole life lives on your phone and your your laptop and you plug in a thumb drive and get a virus on that shiz and you're in big trouble <laughs> um so i'm always skeptical when i get um thumb drives from people i plug them in an old laptop that i don't use anymore and see what's on there before <laughs> i actually like check them out fully um epks uh how should they deliver those babies and that oh, stands that for was, electronic press kit that was just like people questioning like should they bring a press kit you ah. know like stuff like that well um i sure. don't know i mean i don't know if you really need a press kit because unless you're trying to book a gig or get a label deal. Or get a label deal. So, I mean, having that stuff on hand, I mean, obviously having a page on like your website or something that's like a press kit's good because you can send people links to that. Um, yeah, if you're trying to, you know, get some traction or whatever that way. Um, but yeah, that's my thought on that. What do you think? Um, I think that what people want to know, if you're an artist trying to get a record deal and you walk up to an A&R person from a label, um, they really want to know a couple of things. First of all, the music matters a lot. Second of all, um, got to look the part. It's not a matter of how attractive you are on a scale of one to 10, but you got to look the part. You know, mm -hmm. if you're doing um, electro pop, you better look like an electro pop artist, not like you're doing, um, you know, country. Mm -hmm. So an EPK serves that purpose to reinforce those things. More importantly than anything anymore, when they're looking for artists, they're looking for your social footprint. You know, do you have a gazillion followers? If you had a million hits on a YouTube video, um, how are you doing on Spotify? Those are things that matter. Um, it's the new currency in the music industry, so you got to roll with that. Um, I will say that it seems that more and more people in the industry are concerned about that stuff maybe than even the music because they feel like they can plug you into the great producer that's going to build awesome tracks and then find a great top liner so it's, it's kind of like frankenstein together so i'm a little disheartened and conflicted because i'm old school mm -hmm. i you know give me three hit songs and an artist that looks the part more importantly, an artist that looks the part with three hit songs and wants to work their butt off. So if you can convey the work your butt off part to somebody at a label, that's what they want to see. They, they want you to be as committed to doing the work as you expect them to be. Um, so if you can convey that in a verbal conversation over a beer at the bar, that's a good thing. Don't yeah. oversell it, though. Yeah, for sure. And someone was asking how many songs they should put on CDs depends what you're who you're handing it to chuck um what's your experience from the art from the composer side uh in the days when you actually had to give out your music mm -hmm. um, do you put you know 20 on there look i can do everything in, in every possible genre or did you have like two or three from a genre on one cd two or three from another genre another cd got any advice on that i've seen everything i would say anywhere between three and ten is good um, How about you, the, the mix of genres? Do you stick with one or two, or do you go wide? No, you deep? can go not too wide, but like maybe three or four of your best top genres. Put those on there. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, no more than 10. That's kind of pushing it. I'm convinced the worst thing you can say to an industry pro is, I'm looking for a prop I don't have. Oh, <laughs> can I have that CD over there, please? Here you go. 
Steve Archdeacon, ladies and gentlemen. Worst thing you can do is hand a CD to somebody and say, this is my old stuff and it's not my best work. My new stuff is coming out in 30 days. Last one is you can never have an excuse. Don't say, oh, here's my, here's our CD. Oh, two of the songs aren't mastered yet and we're getting a new bass player. We're still working on track five, but I don't. I, and no, I'm moving and no. I haven't put my studio back together yet. Wait till everything's perfect and say, here's my CD. Let me know what you think. Yeah. And it's even better if you can get them to ask you for it. Walk up to somebody and say, you were awesome on that panel. I loved what you said about blah, blah, blah. And people do like to speak about themselves and, mm -hmm. and say, you know, how did you get in the industry? That is the greatest pickup line ever. How did you get your start in the industry, Mr. Music Library owner, Mr. or Mrs. Um, music Supervisor? And inevitably they will ask you, so what kind of music do you make? Well, I'm so glad you asked. There you go. And then don't follow it up with, it's not my best work, the new stuff mm -hmm. is gonna be much yeah. better. <laughs> I'm don't. getting a new then, console. Then don't give it out. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, w what do you think? Do you think that like on a CD, if you had eight songs, should you front load your best? Yes. Yeah. Beginning? Absolutely. Some people are of the mind that you should put the best stuff at the end because you want to leave them wanting more. Nope. No, they're never going to get to the end. They won't get to it. Right. <laughs> yeah, in auditions, yeah. Maybe if you're like an established artist, you can kind of pepper it. But for an audition stage, which is kind of, in in a way, you always want to front load your best stuff. Absolutely. Because you want to grab their attention. And it's funny, sometimes when people pick what they think is their best stuff, they're not the best judge of that. Mm -hmm. So you might want to get some outside opinions. Use the Taxi Forum at forums.taxi.com and put five-year things up there in peer-to-peer -peer and say, I'm putting together a compilation for the road rally what order would you put these in and see mm -hmm. if you can get some consensus. Why not use um, some pretty expert ears of your peers? Don't ask your mom, okay? Just saying. Yeah. I don't know your mom, but just saying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think we pretty much covered everything. I don't know. Do these guys have any questions? Oh, yeah. Questions? Do you guys have any questions? Because we still have three A minutes. A few minutes. Here's an idea. Create a SoundCloud playlist of your potential rally CD. That's a good idea. Uh, okay. Uh, Deep Purple didn't think Smoke on the Water was a very good song. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. If you're if you're someone that is, like, playing live, um, whatever songs people have the most reaction to that they like, that you, you can tell those are probably your best songs, too. So we love Bria. Oh, wow. <laughs> So do we. Yeah, <laughs> she still works here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see. I don't. I, maybe. I guess we answered all of the questions. Either that, or the little squirrels that turn the thing for the internet <laughs> are sleeping. <laughs> I can't read that so far away. YouTube video would be good. I bet. For what, James? For open mic collaborations, anyone? Oh, <laughs> let's talk about the open mic. Oh, question. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention yeah, the open mic. Yeah, you talk about the open mics. I'll try to remember this question. So the open mics, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Uh, there's open mics on Thursday, so the first night, Friday, and Saturday night. There's two open mics, two different rooms. So there's one in the, uh, con the ballroom upstairs and then one in the theater. So they're a little bit of a different vibe. Um, but both really fun, great hosts. Um, so basically, you get to um, sign up for a slot. Um, it's first come, first serve, so we do it in that order. Um, and then uh, you get to play a song. And the great thing about the open mics is that it's really supportive. Everyone there is, you know, a songwriter too. So it's like the best place um, and most like comforting place to play your music because everyone's going to be really nice and support you. Um, and I know usually we do some, we've done some raffles in the past too there. I'm not sure if we're we planning are gonna on be, doing that. Uh, we're going to be giving some stuff away. Um, Which are great. So even if you're not planning on playing, um, you can come and maybe win something, which is great. Um, another thing is that um, 
it's a great place to find collaborators. So if you're not performing, but you're, you know, I'm, I want to find a good vocalist, go to the open mic. You might hear someone that's really good that you could work on, work with, um, you know, they can cut vocals for you, stuff like that. I know whenever I would play the open mics, I would get approached by a few people being like, hey, I really like, um, you know, your voice. Do you ever do like track work and stuff? So it's like a really great way to um, find collaborators too. You wouldn't think so, but it, it really is. Okay, I've seen several people ask this question. I'm not sure if they're asking because they want to, they're proud of the fact that they've got everything that they've done signed already, or if they really don't know the answer. The, the question is, and I've seen this at least three times now in the last two minutes, should I bring a CD, comp, a compilation or a CD with a bunch of material because um, all my material has been signed to libraries? The answer is no. No, 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 no. Because if you think that you hand the stuff to a music supervisor or even more importantly, a music library owner, and you think that a week later when they listen to it, that they're going to remember it, the stuff is already signed, they're not. Then they're going to um, send you an email or pick up the phone and call you and say, I love the third track on this. And you go, oh, sorry, that's already signed. It makes you look like a bit of a rookie. So you got three and a half weeks, okay? Three and a half weeks to create some new stuff. Come up with five new tracks, duh. That way you can give it to people and say, here's some new stuff I created just before the road rally and it is yet, as of yet, unsigned. They will like that much better. Um, and somebody else had a question that I couldn't get. Um, Which one? Gloria, and I could I Is the song career production bar CD friendly? Yes. Um, I believe that they have. Yeah, we can well, make it CD friendly. Better tell Angel. I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and then other than that, too, I mean, just put yourself out there. Don't just go to your room and then go to classes and then just stay in your room. Like, you know, networks, that's hang the, out in the bar. The, the best part of the rally is networking and meeting yeah. people and finding collaborators. So, Chuck. Yes. Um, some people come to the rally just because they're going to get discovered. And the rally is life-changing. People are not exaggerating that when they say it. Mm -hmm. But do you think it, it's cool to show up and walk into the bar and go, hey, I saw you on a panel. Here's my CD. No, you can't be pushy. You have to do it with a plum. Can you do it with a peach or like a tangerine? <laughs> oh my god! Maybe gosh. a tangerine. <laughs> He's gonna roll the day. That's why you get this low is what blood I sugar. What I have to deal with every day. <laughs> no, I am a little more serious. Actually, a little more intense. But, um, low blood sugar. I'm goofy. I will admit. It. Not to mention, I actually had one and a half of those bad boys oh, today. No. Woohoo! No vodka in there. I don't really drink much, but I do loves my sugar. <laughs> Actually, this rock star is sugar free. But yeah, I mean, as always in any situation, you know, and people always will ask me too, how do I approach industry people? Like, and I'm like, they're people. So how would you like to be approached? You know, walk up to them and say, I've got eight by 10 color glossies of you and your girlfriend. Would you oh. like my CD? <laughs> and they will probably say, no. <laughs> but would you like to meet me in the parking lot for a cigarette? <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> now, just. You know what, again, I can't stress this enough. Walk up and pay them a sincere compliment. Mm -hmm. You were great on that panel. What you said about metadata was enlightening to me. I really didn't know much about it. By the way, how did you get into the industry? I, they're gonna be like every, 100 different industry people are gonna call me on Monday after the rally. Mm -hmm. go, it was fascinating how many people wanted to know how, how I got into the <laughs> industry. But it's, the, I'm telling you, best pickup line ever. Yeah. Yeah, and Paul is right. Be nice to everyone. Don't think you're better than anyone else, obviously. And one thing you talked about, have your elevator spiel down. Because if you get an elevator oh, yeah. and this one that you've been wanting to talk to for a long time or meet, they're there. That's your 15 seconds, whatever, from the you know, seventh floor to right. lobby. So you better have it prepared yeah. and ready to... That, it's you literally can run into people in the elevator. Mm -hmm. We had a for taxi sure. member a few years ago. Did you just say for sure? Yes. For sure. How long have you lived here? Three years. <laughs> okay, that's how long it takes before you start going, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, 
<laughs> now <laughs> you forgot what you were going to say. Elevator. You were making fun of the me. elevator speech. <laughs> uh, seriously, don't talk about the fact that you were in Mrs. McGillicuddy's eighth grade choir class and you were just, they don't care. All they care about is how can I make money with you? And it doesn't mean that they're evil, but come on, even a pizza, you know, Jimmy Carvalho, do you not want people to talk about your pizzas, right? Not about where you went to grade school. Mm -hmm. So, or, yeah, something like that. The bottom line is they want to know what kind of music you make and Please, dear God, don't say, I do rock, I do pop, I do country, I do Christian, I do jazz, I do it all. Nobody in the industry buys the versatility thing. Nobody. If you walk up to somebody and say, I do all those genres, I mean, even Chuck wouldn't do that, and he probably does do all those genres, because it tells them, it, it's like you're a little desperate, and they know better. Nobody's great at that many genres. So find out the things that you're really, truly good at. And if they say to you, what kind of music do you do? Say, um, instrumental pop is my forte, but I also do a little singer-songwriter. And I'm also, have confidence. I was telling you this mm -hmm. earlier. So many people that I've asked like, are like, what do you do? And they're like, eh, pop, singer-songwriter. Eh. <laughs> doesn't show me any type of confidence. You, you or, don't look. You people think that they're looking humble, but you yeah, don't look right. humble. Looking, you, you look don't know what like you don't know what you're doing. Hobby, so it's like okay, yeah. well, they don't know. Yeah, be confident in what yeah. you're good at and be honest. You know what? Um, don't try and be all things to all people. And if somebody says, "See, so do you do it full time?" Don't lie about it. Don't fake it and say, you know, my goal is to ultimately do it full time. But right now, every night of the week, I come home from work and I really dig in and do this stuff. I try and spend a good chunk of time on weekends. Be honest. They can tell when you're lying. Yeah. They're going to have little lie detectors. There's a lie detector app for your phone. So if somebody in the industry holds their phone out and says, put your finger on that, watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think we should probably... Yeah. Wrap it up here. Fine line between humble and arrogant. Oh, there's so many things I want to say about that. <laughs> um, anyway, yes, um, we gave away the thing. We talked about the road rally. We played Chuck's excellent music, which I got to say, man, mm -hmm. lush. Oh, man. That's yeah. the word that I'm walking away with for today, <laughs> lush. The yeah. layers on that stuff, and yet it wasn't so busy that, I mean, everything was just... A little salt, a little pepper, a little soy sauce, a little squeeze of lime. Again, with a plum. A plum, that's right. <laughs> plum sauce, baby, plum. plum sauce. <laughs> with that, uh, we will bid you adieu until next week. And next week, we have Ronan Chris Murphy on the show talking about faders and equalizers and compressors and stuff mm. like that. So that ought to be good. Bria, would you hold the band for me, please? Yes, I can hold the band for you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's class. It was very, very good. We will see you next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Bye, you guys. Thank you again, Chuck. Always good to have you.